the duality, the dimension of duality that we exist in. Now, it's important to understand this because this affects your life and how you interact in this reality with other people. It affects how you feel. It affects your goals. Everything that makes you a human being is affected by this dimension that we're trapped in. And you begin to wonder why we have identities as human beings. What's in an identity? When we really break this down, we begin to look at how we relate with and identify with certain groups, ideas, and beliefs. And then we wonder what role these beliefs play in shaping who we are. But most importantly, what role do these beliefs have in separating or dividing us from one another? And that will be the thing that we're going to be talking about today. And why do these beliefs divide us from each other? You would think that just because a person has a certain belief system, that that belief system shouldn't be separating and dividing us from one another. But I'm going to explain to you why that happens. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden is where all this begins. I believe it has much deeper meanings than we were told. The meanings that we've been told, the paradigms that religion has taught us, Christianity, about what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil actually means. We're told that it is unobtainable, that the devil somehow maybe had power in or ruled over. We're told it's a physical tree. We're not told it's a real tree. I mean, a, 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 a symbolic tree. We're told that it's like a real tree and that fruit came off of it. That's what we're told in the Christian paradigm, Christian experience, right? But I believe that it is something deeper. I believe that this tree was actually a dimension. You see, when you think about what a tree is, it has a trunk, it has limbs that branch out. And for every reaction, there's an opposite and equal action. And each limb is dependent on the limb before it, as you go back to the trunk of the tree. And so this tree that they're talking about, I believe is not a physical tree. I believe this was an actual tree that basically was a descriptive phrase for the dimension that we're in, which is the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of duality, it represented a physical and spiritual dimension of duality. Now, previously, the tree of life was set up to only be ruled by God. Right? So God had this tree of life and he told Adam and Eve, you may eat of this tree, the tree of life, and many other trees of the garden, but you may not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now why would he tell them that? Well, the tree of life was the one that was ruled by God. A tree where you didn't have to make choices about good and evil, a tree where there wasn't opposites and duality. Many of the other trees probably also were based off of the tree of life model except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and this is why god told them not to eat of it the only way you can get to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was through choice now in perfect love god had to allow choice one choice was all it took choice to cross over into the dimension of duality and before that God was handling good and evil in the, in the dimension for us. We only needed the tree of life and the other trees in the garden. Imagine what that would have been like, only dependent on the tree of the life and the tree from the garden. There would have been no knowledge of good and evil. There would have been bliss. And God handled the universe in perfect balance. We had everlasting life because of it. And evil did not exist. Duality didn't exist. So when we entered this dimension of duality, it feels natural to actually compete with one another because this is the natural state of affairs. Us in competition with one another. I believe at this point too, our brains were split. When we entered this, we underwent a physical change. And we fell into this dimension. Kind of like uh, certain trout in the, in the ocean will undergo a physical change when they enter fresh water. They gain teeth and things like that. And I believe this exact same thing happened when we fell into this tree of good and evil. Now God tells us to be still and know that he's God. And this, and we'll get into this in a minute, what that actually means. Being still brings us back to the tree of life. The tree outside of duality and competition and the split brain thinking. That's why Christ was in the middle between the two thieves. Thieves actually represented good and evil. 
really the way to depict the tree of knowledge of good and evil is to depict two trees because that's what it is it's polarity and then christ is in the middle he's trying to tell you to be still between the good and the evil not that you're supposed to be evil but you're supposed to let go of the competition part of this life that we're told we need to be successful there is no necessary evil that doesn't exist now the devil will try to tell you that but there's necessary evil that it's necessary to balance out the good but that's not the case so let's break down what it means that duality is one thing versus another in order to experience this dimension we literally live in a dimension of duality where the tendency is for the two forces to oppose each other down to even the anatomical level we see depictions of atoms protons neutrons electrons charges what that ended up being was the curse that was put upon mankind altered state of our existence once we crossed over into this realm this dimension it isn't until we find the stillness the space between that we find the will of god god says be still and know that i am god and what you have to understand about this dimension that we live in as well is that there's lots of imposters hijackers there are people out there that actually want to create a hall of mirrors so to speak to basically try and throw you off track so what happens is, is you've got people out there that are trying to do this stillness thing without god handling it and it's almost so obvious because what you what you'll see with some of these practices is in religions is they'll actually do everything they can to remove god from the meditation and stillness and so it reveals the deceptions because you see them going out of their way to not talk about or mention god but yet they're talking about stillness and meditation which is in the bible god said be still and know that i'm god so do you ever wonder why achieving a goal that you'd worked so hard for is so satisfying it's because it was opposed so heavily opposition for some reason in this reality brings satisfaction it's almost sadomasochistic the way that humans love torture and struggle look at the energy surrounding professional team sports and you wonder why and it's because of the vendettas it's because the opposition is so strong it almost seems like the more drama and hype there is the more gripping the victory and the more people follow and get involved so many super bowls you know and you see this energy spilling out afterwards into the streets and people just letting out all this energy because they have nowhere to place it so they start rioting this is part of the duality of the dimension we live in people are addicted to opposition it's because as humans we are addicted to this we're going to get into how detrimental this is because the father of duality is the devil make no mistake about it now god balances evil in this dimension with good and that's how we know there's a god because he tries to maintain the well he doesn't try he does it because he is god he maintains the balance of good and evil amidst the devil ruling in this world this is where we see miracles happen and hope none of that is of the devil that's god balancing the evil in this dimension you'll also notice the more that the mainstream media pushes the race agenda the more hatred there is on each side notice that i would always ask people what would happen if they just stopped talking about racial divide in the media racism would probably go away they keep showing one side and the other side and they never come up with solutions they just show each side they chose throats so in this realm of duality it pushes people apart just by its very nature now christ opposed evil but he did so at the source and he has the right to do that because he's the son of god right he opposed the reason for all evil which is the devil he took the blame off of people the innocent bystanders and victims of the deception and instead he focused on placing the blame squarely on those he knew understood the love of paradigm and the devil himself he knew that the pharisees knew about this duality and this is where we get so many oldest forms of these games like chess which illustrates the, the duality white chess piece on black squares black chess piece on white squares these people understand the duality and opposition and all of us are pawns in this giant chess board they call life so what did christ do he came and he basically acted as the tree limb on the bank of a river 
pulling you out of the shifting current of the streams, pulling you out of the competition, out of the race, out of the opposing forces, okay? That's what Christ did because he lets you know that it's okay. That you don't have to compete in this world the way that the devil says. Education, rat race, materialism, government, all of these things set up these right left paradigms. They set up the opposing forces. The problem with the realm of duality is that when you force something, an opposite reaction happens on the other end. Someone on the other end, because of your taking and pushing and forcing, is going to suffer. And that opposes the law of love. The law of love, you're not supposed to, at someone else's detriment, steal someone's job or lay people off because you're in a growth mode. You see how all this works? We're supposed to be doing acts of kindness and love, not pushing our way through life, competing with other people, fighting tooth and nail in these jobs and these careers. For what? They can't even quantify the amount of land and the resources there are in the United States. Millions and millions of trees, open land, streams, water. But when you look at the media, they want you to believe that there's some kind of a shortage. Why? So they can control it all and make you push you into this duality. Do you get it now? You see how this works? By pushing you into the duality, they control you. By pushing you into a mindset that there is shortage instead of abundance, they control you because that forces you to compete because you think land is rare. You think there aren't any resources. You think we're always in a drought. That's why they talk about drought all the time. Drought, drought, drought. If there's such a drought, why do they shove so many people into a desert? You guys understand what's going on here. It's the land in the realm duality so let's talk a little bit more about the tree of life which is only the tree of good okay? there's only good in the tree of life it's the tree of god and god is good right and that was god's original plan there was no evil in the universe there was no necessary evil evil came out of choice why because god loves everyone even the devil and in in perfect love you have to provide choice so the devil had a choice called free will. And this is when sin entered the world. Why? Because the devil got jealous. He wanted to be like the most high. And so instead of having everlasting life with the tree of life, we have birth, decay, and renewal. A spinning, endless cycle of destruction. An Ouroboros of reality. The snake eating its tail. This was not the original plan, as you know. So now you see that duality is of the devil. Competition, sides, teams, opposition, red, blue. So you must be still and know that he is God. That is the only way out. And that's what Christ was trying to show us. 